second session um, of a very lovely series of sessions. John, if uh, if you and I were to die today, we'd still have to say it was a hell of a good ride. Think for yourself. <laughs> I've known John for about 40 years, we just figured it out. And uh, remember the traumatic time uh, when he was deciding to come to Texas A&M. He was very concerned. Uh, he said, leaving New York, that doesn't make any sense. So why not? Uh, everything is polluted, John. Uh, look. There's, there's, there's more to America than just New York. And he said, but look, look at the opera, and look at the theaters, and look at the museums, all that's available to you. And I said, uh, when's the last time you've been to one of them? <laughs> he couldn't remember. I said, well, if you, that, if you want that frequency, uh, you'll be able to do it out of College Station. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let me say that uh, John has guts. Um, there was a time uh, when there was no American philosophy, at least in the minds of American philosophers. Um, the APA was uh, totally devoted to uh, the task of everybody refuting everybody else. Um, Nobody read Emerson. Uh, nobody read Dewey. Dewey always brought to mind uh, some guy in the stacks. <laughs> it, 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 was, uh, it was an unknown, American philosophy was unknown. And, and John took it upon himself to bring American philosophy back to the center stage. Those marvelous editions, which I still use, of Dewey and Royce and James, um, big, thick books to show how much good there was in American philosophy, how much, how much it had to offer. Um, any number of times, I, I saw people with eyes open say, my god, I didn't know we had that in our tradition. That's amazing. And then uh, the additions, and, and, and the last of these, the, 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 in some ways the most marvelous one, those huge volumes of the correspondence of William James never would have happened without John. He made it happen by sheer guts uh, and perseverance. And then uh, there is the work in urban aesthetics that he had done, um, the sort of incredibly sensible, and sensitive interpretation of how other people feel and see the world. Uh, you know the story, and I know the story, and I know I'll never forget the story of the person who uh, had this incredible <coughs> love of cigars. The cigar story, you know, you know that story, and John had told the story many times, but it's testimony to how sensitive he is to values other than his own. <coughs> I could go on like this, but I'm not the speaker. We're fortunate to have someone from Poland visiting us specifically for this occasion. I will not take a long time to introduce her because she says she'll be talking about herself and John McDermott. So I just want to say that Christina Wilkoszewska uh, from Jagiellonian University in Krakow will be our next speaker. Welcome. So, uh, before I will start, I want to say that the Texas A&M University and College Station are were special places for me. They are places with meaning. And I am very moved 
big here and for this possibility for the invitation I would like to thank first of all to Professor John McDermott and Professor Daniel Conway and also Mrs. Catherine Stiakowicz. I will divide my speech into three parts. <coughs> Although 